Hey guys, it's Tuesday, March 26. I just got back from a little bit of a disappointing uh, shopping trip at Costco, but I walked in the door to a delivery from my seed haul. This was a last minute seed haul. Um, well, one of many, but the, not all of it's here yet. So anyway, anyway, I'm so happy to say I got three packages. One is from Baker Creek. I always just love these beautiful little packages that they send. And you know, this kind of scares me though. I wonder if I got wasabi radishes. I, I don't think I've tried those yet. Um, we did have the Szechuan red radish that I actually purchased in one of my seed hauls from them. And it was such chemical fire. It, it, it Well, it was just chemically taste. John didn't like it. So I promptly uh, had to get rid of it. So now I'm sort of afraid of hot radishes, even though I might like them. Oddly, he doesn't. Um, one of the first, oh, oh, my free seed. What do you think it is, you guys? <laughs> I'm not growing it. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. Baker Creek, if you can hear me, please stop sending people spoon tomatoes, please, please, please. Here's a suggestion. Give people an option. You can click, get, Choose your free item here for purchases over $10. Here's three choices. It'll probably be a spoon tomato, a date till pepper, and a, or a pack of Mizuna. I am so eternally grateful, but gosh, I wanted this. If this, this is just going to go to waste, never mind. Anyway, I'm really, really excited about a few other things because I'm going down a different road this year as if I really need more things to worry about, but anyway. I'm growing Magic Carpet Time this year. Um, it's funny because they just had this on QVC from Roberta's Gardens. It was similar to this. I think they're calling it Tread on the uh, Time. This creeping time is going to be meant for something very, very specific. Um, we will be using this as a ground cover. So they're saying that you get approximately 75 seeds. And if I get 75 seeds to germinate and I have pretty much a flat of this time, it will be excellent um, to put around to stomp on. And it's a perennial in zones four to nine and they're calling it rugged drought tolerant, uh, drought tolerant plants. So this is one of the first things that I got. It did say it was a new item and I hope it germinates because I really do have a purpose for this, truly. Now, um, the next thing that I ordered here, another purchase for the butterflies. Um, this is another purchase with purpose. Now, I'm hoping that this perennial, it's going to take 10 to 14 days to sprout, which means I will be sowing it promptly today on, uh, as I said, March 26th. So hopefully we'll see. Um, they're saying eight to 12 weeks before last frost. So it's a little, little bit late. I'm right on the edge, but I'm going to get started on this one right away. Now, the other road that I decided to go down this year was to grow lavender. Now we have two different types here. This is the Munstead strain. And then this is some sort of Lavendula vera. Uh, it is perennial. They are both perennial lavenders our goal is to create a formal English garden here. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, English gardens are just really, really beautiful. As you can see, we've already set the frame of our garden with a lot of pea gravel. We use a lot of reclaimed material. We're going to be introducing a lot of statuaries. And I felt like lavender was something that was a must have uh, as an herbaceous border. So I'm hoping, I know lavender can be um, difficult. Now they're saying to hold it in the fridge for 30 to 40 days and then the seeds will sprout. Oh my goodness, do I really have time for that. Other people on the reviews for this said they did not do that method. Some tried that method and it didn't germinate. Some did. Some did it the traditional way. I think what I'm going to do with this is I'm probably going to start some of it like I did with my delphinium, which was a success. I'm going to start it um, in a dark place. Now, I might cold strat this for a few days. I have to do a little bit more research, but uh, nonetheless, I'm determined. One lavender 
plant is so very expensive. So if I can get entire flats of them growing to create the herbaceous border, this is the most economical way that I can think of doing it. So it might be a total loss if they don't germinate, but we will see. So this order for Baker Creek um, was a tiny one. So now let's get into um, botanical interest. I also love this little box. When I see this coming in the mail and my mail carrier is uh, bringing it up the walkway to me to put it in my front door, I'm always, always really excited. I need to get some scissors, hang on. Well, this cute little box was just a little bit of overkill for just a few packs of seeds, but um, I'll be holding on to the box because they're really good for just stashing stuff in and my, my seed hoarding, um, it helps to keep me organized and they fold down nice and flat. So, well, right on top, I can, I can honestly say that I'm very happy for this free seed from Botanical Interest because I actually grow uh, mes masculine level lettuce. It's just mixed lettuce. It always does well. I will always use this, but gosh... I'm going to ruminate now and say, another spoon tomato? I don't even know how many I have at this point. Oh my goodness. Now, um, another thing that I'm starting to get a pretty big collection of is sunflowers. But this was one I've been meaning to pick up and it took me a while to get to it. I was, I was seeing it everywhere. And then this year I started looking for it and I couldn't find it. Um, don't you know, after I placed the order, the vanilla ice sunflower actually sold out. Um, now this is a creamy light yellow color uh, flower, three to five inch flowers, multi-branched. Now I'm doing a mix of multi-branch and single branch, like the mammoth is a single branch and you get that one gigantic mammoth uh, sunflower head. And you know, they're great. I let the birds feed on them. It's wonderful. Something like this I'm doing because I'm, I'm going to start some flower bouquets this year. Now that's the promise I'm making to myself. I don't know if it's actually gonna happen. Sometimes I always start the garden season with intent, like I'm gonna have a little garden stand at the end of my driveway this year. I've been saying that for at least five years. It hasn't happened yet. Um, Mr. Buddy says, go ahead, mommy, start the garden. I don't know if you can hear Mr. Buddy in the background, but here's vanilla ice and I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. Now, another purchase for the butterflies is another variety of yarrow. Now, this feels like it's either really tiny seeds or maybe, maybe it's pelleted. I don't mind that it's pelleted, but I don't think there are very many seeds in here and I don't know why they must be really, really, really tiny. It's, I'm not seeing how many seeds it's telling me that it might have. Um, it's just saying how many grams. So this will be interesting, but I'm going to get this one started right away. And uh, I'm pretty sure this one is a perennial, which I really need most of these things to be at this point because I'm going to tire out quickly. Now, my shelves are full. It's a lot going on, it's a lot to manage. Everything is thirsty. It's like having a bunch of children in the house and I've got to get them out into the yard. The next thing that I am growing, which is, yes, I'm sorry, the Colorado is a perennial. So I thought I saw that somewhere, but I'm trying to read the back and it didn't say it. So I have attention deficit in case you haven't noticed. The next perennial I grabbed is Feverfew. Now this reminds me very much of chamomile. It also reminds me of Erigeron. Uh, Erigeron has a little bit of a different uh, petal structure and the chamomile has just become truly invasive in the garden. So I might have some other ideas with that that I'll be getting into in another video, but Feverfew I felt like was really great for a cutting flower and I'm hoping that it won't attract the aphids as much as the chamomile does. Um, early in the season when I get my big chamomile bloom, I'm grabbing the heads very, very early on because these little black aphids come and they just totally annihilate it. It does come back for a second bloom, but I wanted something that I could clip into flower arrangements. So I figured I would go for this little perennial charming flower that should look so pretty and delicate mixed in with other larger flowers. Um, the next thing I got is a tried favorite. There's only a few pelleted seeds of this Brentwood lettuce that it really is a beautiful dark leaf. It grew very, very easily. You don't get a lot of seeds, but because they're pelleted, you can see where they go. And um, I really, really enjoy this lettuce. So if you're looking for something that you can grow easy, I would highly recommend this. We are successful at growing lettuce, as um, you might be able to see. Behind me, my tray is doing really well. This will be going outside either today or tomorrow. 
The last thing that I grabbed from Botanical Interest is the Megatron Jalapeno. I have horror stories about hot peppers and getting capsaicin burns. Don't ask me why I ventured into this. I swore that I was not going to grow hot peppers anymore because of the level of capsaicin burns I had. One year I maced myself because a bunch of seeds went down into the garbage disposal and I wasn't really paying any attention hit the garbage disposal and it, like it went to powder. It was horrible. It was in my eyes. My hands were on fire. My face was on fire. And then the stories of cutting these peppers and getting them prepared, you know, to either cook or uh, store in the freezer, you get the oils in your hands. And then, you know, naturally you touch yourself in places, ladies, you rub your eyes or everything else. And a hot pepper burn is not a fun sensation, but, um, you know, I hope that these are not too hot. It says that they're mild, and uh, on the Scoville scale, they are 2,500 to 5,000, which they're considering medium hot. But because we get a lot of wind and we have very dry climate in the back, our hot peppers seem to get a capsaicin load every year. So these are supposed to be very large, four and a half inch long peppers, making them perfect for stuffing. So we'll see. I do have some ideas for them. So I might only grow one plant this year because I don't eat a tremendous amount of these, but I'll grow them alongside of the very many daytail peppers I've started, which by the way, you guys, the free daytail peppers, they germinate it really easy for me. They're growing along happily up in the grow tray. So, um, you know, we'll see. I also have out of three pepperoncinis that I planted, only one germinated. So we'll see. I'm going to come up with some ideas. So the next thing that I got, I'm trying something new from Park Seed. Now, normally I just get seeds from Parks, but Every year when I go to the farm stand, I like to see, you know, well, I first know, I first realized after buying the Parks Whopper uh, tomato at Lowe's every year, um, I realized that the farm stands that Parks had the Whopper cucumber and Parks also had the Whopper strawberry, usually supplied by um, a vendor called Chef Jeff's. And I kept looking at it, looking at it, and I thought, okay, someday I might try this Park Swapper Giant. And they, they market it as on, in this beautiful little red bucket that they give to you, the world's largest strawberry. Well, they're expensive. I think it was, I think I might be wrong. It might have been $10 for one strawberry plant and a cute little, not really an ornamental pot. It was just their marketing. And I hesitated to buy it because a few years ago, we got a big giant bare root delivery of strawberries from Norse Farms up in, I think they're up in Massachusetts. And those strawberries did okay. I think we got um, uh, All Star. I can't remember all of them, but some of them turned out to be much smaller. Um, and there was one variety that was very, very large. And there's nothing like a homegrown strawberry, you guys. The strawberries that you grow from bare roots are red straight through. They're, um, they're not bland, they're not bitter. They're wonderful and fragrant and they're just so delicious. So anyway, they grew so happy. Again, our busy gardening year got ahead of us and our crowns got runners and then they spread everywhere. So we have so many strawberries to try to harness this year. I can't even wrap my brain around it. So last year I took a chance and I thought, okay, we're enjoying the strawberry so much. Let me go ahead and grab this Park Swapper, largest strawberry in the world from the farm stand and see what happens. Well, it, we promptly planted it. It was one crown and it happily gave us strawberries the first season. Now, again, that had runners and it grew all over the place, but I thought, all right, let me take a chance here. When I got my email alert in the advertisements and promotions sections from Parks, which I like to sign up for because that's where you get your best deals, I somehow missed that they were selling 20 bare root stra Parks Whopper strawberry um, plants for just $10. It's normally $20. Well, I missed it and I was so upset. But anyway, I managed to come up with another sale that gave me 
I don't know, a certain percentage off, 15 or 20% off or something. So I ended up getting um, like five bucks off and I still went ahead and ordered them because I thought it was a good deal. When you take into consideration that one plant is, you know, between five and $10. I don't think it was more than $10, but it could have been $5. So now I have 20 more bare root plants. So they seem to be packed somewhat well. Um, let's see what they gave me. So I don't know what's going to happen here. These do not look nearly as nice as, well, maybe they do. They're pretty well packed in, um, heat moss and, uh, hopefully they gave me some sort of, um, I forget what it's called. Norse sent me a packet of this gelatinous stuff. You mix it up and, uh, it creates this gel like substance that you have to, I forget what, the, what what it's called, but you soak your bare roots in there to rehydrate them before you put them back in the ground. So anyway, I'm not going to take these out of the packet to show you right now, but I will show you when I'm getting ready to actually plant them. I'm going to keep these chilled in the refrigerator out in the garage so that they're in a nice cool spot. And these usually uh, get planted in April for June bearing strawberries. Now, what I was trying to say was, the, the pot that I got last year was, it already had buds and flowers on it. So, and I think I planted that in May and literally by June, we had these gigantic strawberries. They were gigantic and they were so deep red all the way through. I could not recommend them enough. So now you might want to check out Park Seeds. They're Prices for bare root are not so bad, but the shipping and handling is very, very expensive with park seeds. Or you can look out for the Chef Jeff product. Um, if you go into, I think it's chefjeff.com, they will tell you where you can locate their um, started plants. You know, they go around to different farmer's markets and things like that where you can buy them. So maybe you can find one plant to give a try before you decide to venture into starting like a strawberry orchard like we are. So, but anyway, so I thought I'd mix it up with you a little bit, you guys. You know, today I also wanted to tell you real quick because I don't really want to lose the footage. I want to give you an opportunity to see um, what I saw at Costco today. I'm sorry, it's very very bad lighting. Um, I went to do my normal haul and wanted to bring you along. And I just came out of Wegmans. Now Wegmans, there was some horrible stench in the Wegmans and Mount Laurel store, you guys. I don't know if I was the only person. Their entryway literally smelled like a putrid porta potty that was from Woodstock or something and that had never been cleaned. Oh my gosh, the stench in there was horrific. I don't know what it was. I've never smelled anything like that in Wegmans. Now at Costco, I've been noticing some kind of smell coming back near one of the refrigerators. It almost smells like rancid turkey. It smells something really, really bad. If any of you from the Mount Laurel or who are you know, in the Mount Laurel, New Jersey area and you shop at the Mount Laurel Costco, if you've been smelling this ran rancid smell coming from the refrigerator section in the back, um, in Costco, it was terrible. But the other thing, that was kind of like a, a side note, but I, I couldn't really function in there because of the smell. Um, and then there was the fact that there just were not a lot of sales. So I'm going to go ahead and insert the footage of what I did see today here very, very quickly. There's no talking. It was noisy and obnoxious. So I really, I'll play a little low music for you. As you see, they did have one giant thing that I thought you guys who have little kiddos might like. So uh, I'll show you that. But the, the greenhouse isn't on sale. All the garden supplies I've been buying are not on sale. They had some new varieties of long field gardens, like they had ranunculus. But after hearing how difficult the ranunculus is to grow, I just didn't feel like dealing with it this year. So I passed on that. It was a little chaotic, so I got out of there. So I'm going to roll that footage here now.
so that was that. I think that the, the Costco uh, sales, I don't know, something's weird with them this year. Not sure how many more uh, Costco hauls I'll be doing. I really only like doing them at certain times of the year, really mainly when I'm doing garden content for you. So, you know, the Costco thing, you'll if you notice, I really only do it in late winter and early spring. Um, last week, I had I did a video for you. There also was not that much to show, and it was so noisy in there that... I had to scrap all of my footage. So um, it was just a disaster. After I left Costco last week, I ran into TJ Maxx and I wanted to look to see if they had some garden art. And they did. So right now I want to introduce you to a new little garden friend that I could not resist. Oh, here she is. OMG. Now, Anthony, I know you and I were having a conversation about garden statuary and uh, where to get it and it's most affordable. Oh my gosh, she is so beautiful. I saw her sitting on a lower shelf in some odd place in, in TJ Maxx last week. They did have a bunch of other things in. They had this most wonderful little elephant and I wish, I'd, I wish that I had gotten them and this week he's gone. So I was hoping, I was hoping that it was still there today when I ran in but I was secretly happy that it was gone because it's one more thing that I just would have bought today. But when I saw her, will you look at these feet and these legs? She has this wonderful little tiny waistline. She's dreaming of flowers, you guys. I swear to you. The minute I brought her in, Buddy said, flower, flower. Um, I showed her to the boys. They loved her. It was so strange. They all gave her a kiss. I'm telling you, it was the strangest thing. And I said, oh my gosh, she is so dreamy. I know, I know that she has light auburn hair and she has the palest and glowy mint green eyes. I think the flowers on her head are probably pink. Um, she deserved a name, of course, as well as all of our garden statuary. So now the name I'm going to say, I'm going to spell it on the screen for you below because for some reason I wanted to, I kept calling her Gwenny, Gwen, like Gwen, like Gwendolyn or like, and then I thought, no, like Guinevere. Um, I, I just have to go with the thoughts that came to me. But I thought, you know, I like to call the fairies Faye. So instead of calling her Guinevere, I'm calling her Gwena Faye. And I'll spell it for you. Anyway, Gwena Faye, my little Gwenny, she's my new friend. I just love her. So she'll be joining us in the garden at some point. Now she's been sitting on the kitchen table for a week because I do not have the heart to put her outside. I am in love with her. She is a ray of light for me. John loves her. Uh, he walks in and he sees her sitting on the on the kitchen table. It's it's like a little girl came into the house. I'm telling you, she's, she's just the sweetest little thing. So, but anyway, that was my off the wall last minute haul. <laughs> with a bunch of various stuff that I wanted to show you. So I do have a few more things coming that I'm shopping with purpose. And there's a project that we'll be getting into you guys that I'll be showing you in video in great detail. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this haul. And again, for something different, check out um, parkseed.com for their strawberry selection, as well as Norse Farms. Side note, most places are either out of stock or possibly done shipping strawberries now but it's not too late to get a June bearing strawberry. You just might not have the sale. However, if you sign up for email alerts from parkseed.com, you'll probably get offered some sort of free shipping or some sort of a discount code for it being your first time. So I'm not really sure what the special is today, but you'll see that you do get promotions from them a lot. So anyway, you guys, does anyone want a spoon tomato? Thanks for spending the day with me here, guys. Stay tuned. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos, you guys. I'll see you in the next video.